when words have been interpreted differently in our translations of life and the message can quickly change in that interpretation, the text can move us to a different emotional response. We take the language of today's gospel, how Jesus was deeply moved and changed the word moved to anger. As one scholar has expressed, Jesus may be angry at the Jews, those who are not his own, who have intruded onto the scene. But if Jesus is not deeply moved, if he does not grieve, if he does not weep in the scripture today, we can see how anger begins to set a disheartening stage, not only relevant 2,000 years ago, but still very much relevant in our lives today. A stage of an angry Jesus has dangerously played out for thousands of years displaying hatred against all Jews. In these recent killings in the Pittsburgh synagogue, the Tree of Life has showed another stage that was set of anti-Semitism, has shown again how another heart had been hardened in anger so I refute this understanding of changing Jesus' language and mood. Because we've all seen how hatred has played out, whether it's placed upon the shoulders of their religion or their life in these past few years. Instead, I am encouraged for us to take on a symbol of our lives being connected together like trees in this great forest of creation. With each tree representing a different understanding of faith, each tree representing a different group that comes to God in the way that we come to God, giving praise and giving thanks for all that God has given us. It enables us to be one of thanksgivings, one of praise. For us, our tree of life is called Jesus Christ, and yet our tree is built upon the nutrients of all the saints who have gone on before us. It is in the soil of the saints which feeds all the roots of the trees. It's in the soil of the saints that reminds us of our connection underneath the surface. Our presiding bishop, Michael Curry, exclaims that we are one of many branches of Jesus' tree. We are one branch growing from one tree with other Christians. And on this day, we celebrate the soil of the saints who help us to uphold our own faith, who help us to walk in God's love within our own tradition, who help us to remember that one day we too will return to the earth. And if we truly believe that God is good, And why wouldn't we think that all the trees of life are made up of God's global kingdom? And if we do, it allows our hearts to break with Jesus. It allows Jesus' hearts to break with us. It allows us to break hearts with the Jews when we see death around us. When Jesus hears of Lazarus' death, surely he too wanted God to save him from experiencing that loss. To hear of the death of loved ones 
we need to free ourselves and embrace a period of weeping, of grieving. Because if we restrain our hearts from breaking open, it's very easy for our heart to harden. And scripture tells us time and time again, when a heart begins to harden, it is in that moment in time that our heart can become angry and filled with hatred. And then we can go out looking for that a scapegoat in the world so that we can place that emotion upon them. Our mind can zoom in as our heart begins to narrow. The wisdom of the saints of how to live our life faithfully can be forgotten. Our saints seeing of God's goodness. Our saints push us to share in the work of God. Our saints whisper the reminder in our ears when it is a time to cry, to weep, to mourn. Our saints remind us of our hope and trust in the resurrection. When Jesus saw Mary weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. If there was anger in those who came with Mary, whether their intentions were good or bad, they were moved. And when people are moved, there is great hope for humanity. When people are moved, it helps us to find our connection with the Holy Spirit to guide us into a understanding of the sorrow placed before us. It helps us to be connected to God. When that connection with God happens, it reminds us that we are constantly being knit together in one community and one fellowship, as our opening prayer on this All Saints Day explains. I believe that all the saints that have gone on before us would tell us that all the trees of faith are one with God and invite us into that beauty to share here and now. That we should be moved to be connected with one another, not only in tragedy, but also in times of joy. Because as we continue to find that connection, we find ourselves drawn to the heart of God. And when we're drawn to the heart of God, it's when we extend and we give praise and thanks to God who's with us. And as members of the Christian tree, we are called to constantly build up that body of Christ. To build up means that we have to loosen anything that might be restraining us from becoming the disciples that God has called us to be. God wants our limbs to keep growing. But we recognize that it is in sin that we are tied up. Sin places knots onto our hearts, into our lives, wraps up our limbs so that we cannot be free and open. So Jesus goes to the door of death today at the tomb and he yells, Lazarus, come out. And, Je and Jesus stands there as Lazarus comes out, wrapped up like a mummy, 
So surely only his feet are shuffling underneath all of that wrapping. His mouth is covered with a bandage of death. And as Jesus ends our gospel on this holy day, he says, unbind him and let him go. In our moments of life together, we see how folks come in to silence and to restrain others through death. But thank goodness it continues to show God's grace working through the community of all the faithful, coming together, being connected as one, as we say, love will always win over hate. Dear Lord, help us to find the ways that we are restrained from loving you more. Help us to find the things that have tied us up in our lives so that we can live into that rich tradition that the saints who have gone on before us and live in the soil of life which we still walk upon, that it is grace that it is God's goodness in which we hold and carry forward. And in this, there's an importance of grief. There's an importance in sharing to break the bonds of sin. And each time that those bonds are broken, we can extend farther and farther out as we share in building up God's kingdom and that amazing forest of love that God has planted around us. Amen.